Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Big Brother Canada 8 recap. Uh, it's the first Big Brother Canada 8 recap of the season. I'm your host, Turner Armstrong, and with me today is Melissa. How are you doing, Melissa? I'm great. It was very exciting that uh, Big Brother Canada is back. I'm happy to have it back. Um, it always excites me. You know, you hear the music and you see everything all set up and it just like, it's like, yeah, let's get the season started. So the beginning of the season is always the best part, I think. But, yeah. you know, there's so much promise, you know, it's like, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. You could have like the best player you've ever seen in the house and we have no idea. So very exciting. I've got to say, I, you know, I, Big Brother's been doing these two-night premieres for a while um, now, and I always feel like the first night I'm just not getting enough. It's, yeah, I, I hate it. It feels too short. I mean, part of it is that, you know, us being us, we've already gone through the cast videos and the bios, and so we've already seen half the episode, because that's what half the episode is, is just watching those videos again. That's um, true. Yeah, no, I also feel like, I also feel like they, they just replay the videos and i guess that's fine but i kind of thought that they'd give us some more information at least rather than just like interspersing the videos that were already released you know it, it just to introduce us I, I really thought that they'd give us something more but i feel like i could have skipped the first half of the episode and it wouldn't have mattered yeah but just, i mean like we're big fans but like I mean, come on. Yeah, well, in Big Brother US, they uh, they have like the oh, you you found a key, and then they mm -hmm. have exclusive interviews just for the episode um, that that did not air previously, um, and so it's a it's a little more palatable. But again, this is this is for people that that are like us who go through those videos. For people that don't, obviously, they're seeing them for the first time, and I'm sure it's just as exciting. Um, but uh, but it always just leaves me feeling like I want more, which I guess is a great way to start a season. Yeah, it, it's good, except it's also like, I feel like nothing happened. I mean, basically until the last like five minutes of the episode or like 10 minutes of the episode, uh, nothing had happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they introduced themselves. Um, we didn't even get like a full uh, like introduction really. Um, in the uh, they always go around and introduce themselves. They skipped over most of the people. Um, I guess it was a particularly boring one. Um, but uh, yeah. So you know, we, we saw that, and then we saw the the announcement of the twist. We saw the competition, and that's about it from the premiere. Yeah, I feel like they should have stuck more with the introductions around the table because I always love seeing people's first reactions and responses to uh to the new house guests and like who they who they like who they seem to gravitate towards who seems to like vibe well and I feel like we didn't really get a lot of that and so I I'm sure they'll give it to us tomorrow or whatever but I don't know I just feel like I'm not huge on watching competitions anyway so and you know what I you know what I noticed like that really stood out to me. I mean, I feel like this is always the case, but the, it really stood out to me this time was the lack of DRs, where the U.S. is all about like interspersing DRs between literally every sentence they say outside. Like they introduce themselves, it's like, "Ooh, what a hunk," and then it's like, you know, then the next sentence, and then it's like, "I think I'm gonna get along with her." It's I. I don't like how often they do it and how canned it is, but I do kind of want to see like, what are they thinking? And I have no idea if someone thinks someone's weird or if someone thinks someone's cool or if, you know, I don't know. I just feel like I, I, I know nothing. Yeah, we, we really don't. We know, we know nothing of the social dynamics in the house right now, uh, apart from one conversation between, I think it was Vanessa and Ming Lee, mm -hmm. where uh, Vanessa was like, hey, I, I need you here, or I want you here. Um, but, I mean, for all we know, that was fake, too, right? Like, right, just, like, we have no public. idea. Yeah. Um, she literally could have gone into the DR afterwards and been like, yeah, I don't want those people here. Like, I, I, they're a competition to me. Get them out. But yeah. we have no idea. Yeah, uh, but uh, we're still going to talk about the episode. Uh, if you if you are joining us for the first time uh, or joining us for Big Brother Canada for the first time, we are here. We're going to talk about each episode after it airs, except for the Wednesday night episodes, as you're probably realizing. You're 
probably listening to this at least Thursday morning, if not a little bit later, uh, because Survivor airs on Wednesdays. And so it's hard to uh, we also cover Survivor. So there's a lot of stuff to cover. So um, the Wednesday night episodes will be covered in the morning at 11 a.m., um, which also happens to be when I do my daily live feed updates. And so it'll be a, a, a mix of the two. What we usually do is I'll start the, uh, the, the update with a recap and then uh, get into spoilers from the live feeds after it's usually just a quick little thing this will probably just be a quick little thing um and uh because because we get another episode the next day and uh you know that's when we do the real deep dive into the uh, the episodes uh of the week so We'll be talking about Big Brother Canada all season long. And of course, uh, make sure you check out the roundtables Tuesday nights. That's where Melissa, myself, and Brent do a, a full recap of the feeds for the week as a whole. And we uh, we really get down into the details, rating the players uh, on their gameplay every week. And we'll be playing uh, a game that we call the Stock Watch, where we buy and sell shares of, of house guests based on how well they're doing. It's very fun. And I am very bad at that. <laughs> She's really bad. I... I'm really bad. I, every single time, I like cannot figure it out. And we've been doing it for years now. <laughs> you just I, do I, the same thing every week. And we point out what you're doing wrong and you keep doing it. I feel like I'm doing it differently. I feel like every time I change up my strategy and yet I'm not. I don't know what it is. I really don't. So, yeah. you know, don't follow my strategy, whatever my strategy is this season. Like, even if it's the strategy that Taryn used last season, it's not going to work this season. So just, you know, don't do what I do. Do the exact opposite of what I do. <laughs> Okay. And then you'll win. <laughs> All right. Easy. So uh, to start the episode, we had this uh, this uh, this opening sequence uh, that was very comic book esque. We had like an animation. Uh, this like woman with blue hair was like fighting, I guess, Big Brother, which was uh, you know as it was like a big tall dude robot dude maybe i don't know i don't know what big brother was supposed to be there <laughs> just what you think of as big brother just like what whoever godzilla fights i think is was what big brother was yeah that sounds about right yeah. i feel like they they always put a lot of work into their intros which i do appreciate uh although if you don't know the show and you watch their intros uh for big brother canada you're going to be like, what the heck is this show? <laughs> like, what is going on here? You know, they made the, the sort of superhero versions of the cast members. I, I thought it would have been cool if they had used those characters yeah. in this animation. Like all of them watching to. at home and then they all come together to face off against Big Brother in the big scene. Um, I, just, I just like, who is this woman with blue hair? I don't, I don't know. And I don't know why they didn't. Why didn't I mean, maybe they're going to use them in the future, but I was like, oh, that's so cool that they made animated versions of the, the cast like that's clearly going to be used and it's not yet. I mean, it might come into play later, but I feel like the first episode would have been a good situation to use that. But I'm sure I'm sure it will be. Uh, it could have oh, been good as like an introduction too. like they yeah. start off as animated and then they like you see that they're actually real. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, uh, it was it was cool though. It was, I, I really like the theme. The house it just looks ridiculous uh, in a good way. I think um, it's like it's 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 very loud in my eyes. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like it very colorful and lot. just packed with stuff. I okay. So like this is gonna be an unpopular opinion, but the Big Brother Canada house is always painful to the eyes. Is a little too much every single season and it visually beautiful stunning but watching those on the live feeds and just trying to like pick out the people amongst <laughs> all the like nonsense chaos like crazy colors crazy styles mirrors like steel <laughs> metal like it's just like oh my god it's it's a little much and so if i'm being honest i like the big brother us themes better typically oh boy that that is a controversial it opinion is, right there. it is and i know everyone loves the house and they're so excited every year for the house to come out but it's like i just want honestly this is what i want a plain house i know that's not <laughs> visually necessarily appealing but like i just want a plain house you on house design is me on game design <laughs> yeah you you want just no twists no no yeah. nothing Normal game, back to basics game. I want back to basics house. Mm. I just right. want like, like you know, just a nice aesthetically pleasing house. 
<laughs> Melissa's Melissa's gonna be watching the feeds, and she's gonna have like there's gonna be a camera that's just on the like the photos of the animated characters, and she's just gonna be watching them like they're yeah, so like, quiet. Huh? I don't understand. This is like, so they're annoying. They're just sitting in a room. I don't get it. What's going on? Why is no one talking? Yeah. And then, yeah, I could absolutely see that. And then or I'll be like trying to pick out the people, and I'll be like, "Where is the person? Where? Oh, is that? Oh nope, that's laundry. Okay, wait, no, I don't know who that is. Yeah, yeah. And you'll exactly figure it out, and you'll be like, "Oh, Big Brother Canada house, <laughs> mm-hmm. you got me again." Yeah, I'll be like, "Where is the plane house? Where <laughs> is the house that you might buy or see on Zillow?" Uh, what a depressing conversation for the house designers to listen to. I know. <laughs> I feel so bad because, like, honestly, it's it's amazing what they do. It's great, but. It is a little much for me, for my taste. Mm. All right. So so we're introduced to the cast. Uh, Six for the first group, five for the next, and five for the uh, the final group. Um, A total of 16 players. Uh, I I don't think we need to go through every person because we've already kind of done the (laughs) pre-season cast assessment. If you haven't listened to that and you want uh, more detail about each uh, house guest, you can listen to that one. It's uh, it's here on YouTube if you're listening or uh, or watching or it's uh, uh, in the podcast feed if you're listening. Um, but I do want to know from you, we saw a little bit extra from uh, from some of these people. Uh, wh- was there anybody that surprised you that you changed your opinion on? Um, because I got to say, based on what we saw, most of what I saw was pretty in line with how I expected them to be. Yeah, I think it's about what I thought. I didn't really see anything that stood out as surprising or crazy or anything like that. And I feel like also we didn't see enough of the house guests in the house to to really be like, oh, oh, that was just a persona they were putting on for the cameras. Like this is the real them. Because I feel like you don't really get that on the first night. You kind of have to wait a few days and then you start to see like the true personalities. So I feel like I can't even judge the house guests now that they're in the house because, you know, there's, they've still got that, that front on. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say though, that Vanessa in the diary room reminded me of Tyler and it might just be the hair. Like it might (laughs) just be the hair that's distracting me and making me think like that's Tyler. But even just the way that she was talking about, certain things it was like okay i'm getting hints of tyler i mean who knows how she'll play but just the way that she like looked and the way she talked and the way she acted in the dr i was like okay wait that reminds me of tyler I can maybe I can maybe see that. Uh, I did enjoy mainly the hair. <laughs> mainly the hair. I did enjoy Sheldon uh, walking out uh, onto the stage um, as they're <laughs> calling people. They're all like. <sighs> And then uh, it's like, and here's Sheldon. He's just like, (laughs) no, no, no no reaction. Yeah. Uh, I I love it. I mean, that that takes dedication to to walk out to cheers and to just straight face it the whole time. I couldn't do it. I just like, I'd try and my face would just like be like, oh my God, people are cheering (laughs) for me. I'm so excited. Uh, I mean, I guess as a wrestler, he's probably he's probably used oh, to. Oh yeah, it. he's probably used um, to that. Probably and pr- it probably. I mean, who knows what kind of like character he plays as a wrestler? But if he's used to playing like a that kind of character, I I, I could totally see Sheldon as a wrestler coming out to cheers with that same thing. Yeah, happening. definitely. Also, um, did you see that uh, that Kyle was first in? Yes. We haven't fully. I feel like there's still debate over whether the first in curse is real or not because you know tamar won but she walked in first but that was big brother celebrity so people are still a little hesitant about it so you know we'll just have to see if yeah, Kyle and, wins, and, it's broken and also like big brother canada has only had seven seasons of it of it not happening so you know not yeah. as much history as big brother us proper so i feel like it's not as bad yeah, there's still a chance for Kyle. There's still yeah. a chance. <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, we see them go in. Uh, another character moment that we saw was from Ming Lee, who seemingly is living up to her intro video. She's like, "I'm, I'm a lot, I'm a lot," uh, and she's like, uh, "Can we? Let's do a toast. Let's do a toast to you know, first one, two, three, four, five, six people in." Um, and they're like, "Well, let's like go look around the house." And she's like. All right, but let me just let me just drink this first. Let me just <laughs> let me just get another that one. Actually, so great. I love her so far. She's so great. I I that's what I thought she'd be like, and that's what we're getting. So I'm hopeful that it stays like that and is not is not a situation where uh, we feel 
fooled and betrayed by her. I I just think that she's going to be a fun character. And, uh, you know, her performance later on in the episode is uh, very good. Yeah. Um, so we see uh, we see, you know, Chris come in. He's he's definitely you know we pointed out his his kind of crazy eyes um, in the preseason. That was that is not a fluke. He's he's just got the eye. Hey, those are just his how's eyes. How's it going? Nah, I'm Chris. <laughs> um, it's because uh, <laughs> it's, it's, that was like remember uh, when Tyler was doing his intro like um, interviews mm -hmm. and his eyes were just yeah. like the whole time just like this and we were like whoa this guy is a little much and then he gets in the house and it's like that doesn't seem to be a problem until he's lying yeah then, um, then it was winston with the crazy eyes yeah exactly so i i thought maybe the chris thing like maybe he wasn't going to be so intense but it, it kind of looks like he is it's hard to say though i mean it could still be the act still first day so we'll see yeah. Um, so we also saw Jamar in this episode with, uh, you know, a, a lot of Jamar stuff, if you feel me. Uh, you know, he's very, very Jamari. Uh, it's uh, yep. very much what he showed in his interview with Ika. Maybe a little more energy than I anticipated. Yeah. Um, it's he's like he's like his interview with Ika, which was just very just like super cocky and like uh you know just like yeah hey how's it going uh look i'm i'm jamar you feel me you know what are you gonna do uh but in the episode it was more like uh hey i'm jamar how's it going uh, you know hey i'm, I'm jamar um, so, you like that impression that's good yeah I mean, you know we're working on it <laughs> yeah um, we gotta figure out gotta get the impression uh impression uh roster for you mm. uh, <laughs> the rolodex it, definitely interesting to to watch him here i'm still not sure if this if he's going to be successful or not he he came off as like very like uh he's just v very uh energetic and very, very like like in your face a little bit like yeah it's it's jamari like i he feels like the kind of guy that's gonna want to take control real early to me yeah and i don't know how well that's gonna work out I hope that's not the case, but it does seem like he might be the type to like step in there and be like, someone's got to lead and it's going to be me. Um, I'm not a fan of catchphrases, so I'm really hopeful that this whole like you feel me thing doesn't necessarily catch on. You're saying you don't feel him? I, I don't yet, mm. but I'm hopeful that uh, he doesn't pull one of those flame out early because he tries to take control of things. And I hope that he plays really smart and low key and just like gets people to like him. He seems like a nice enough guy, like, and you know, entertaining and funny. So I'm hopeful that that is the case where he's just like plays that up where it's like, people just want to be around him. And the strategy isn't you know, like on the back burner for the first, like, you know, week or whatever. Uh, I feel like the first week is always the danger zone for people who want to come in and just play as hard as they can. And that's, that's, that's when you get a target on your back. They always say, I mean, well, Rob always says to go to sleep for the first half of the game. And, uh, you know, so we'll see what happens. We will see. Uh, we also are going to get the knowledge dropped on the house guests that there is no HOH in the first week. And mm -hmm. to me, actually, this is the most interesting part of this twist, right? The, the twist is that the audience has been voting and the people with the, the four people with the least amount of votes are going to be in danger of being evicted this week. Um, and they're going to have to compete in competitions. And that's going to be the main focus of this twist. But the most interesting part to me is this no HOH part of it because usually when you start the season you have an hoh competition relatively quickly either on the first night or within the first couple of days um and that is what really sets the tone for the entire season that's when the game really starts and so prior to that moment usually in the house it's pretty kumbaya it's pretty mm -hmm. uh like it's pretty summer camp and um there's not a lot of like uh you know drama or strategy or anything because uh there's no game to be played yet because there's no hoh yet and so somebody wins hoh the game starts, they have to make nominations, There's ha they have to have a vote, and the game usually is, again, the tone is set by that first HOH. But with no first HOH, I'm very curious to see 
what kind of dynamic forms um because usually there's people on the in and people in the out on the outs um but is that going to happen in in a season when there's no hoh yet uh obviously when it comes down to the to the last two people there are going to need to be voting factions um but are they going to be playing in the same way in terms of like setting up their next target because they don't even know who has the hoh yet who has the power and so uh, I i'm really interested to see what kind of dynamic we uh, we come into when we when we jump into the feeds tomorrow night yeah definitely um do we know when that person's getting voted out i assume it's tomorrow night okay so because I was wondering if it's going to end up being like a full, almost a full week or at least like a few days where there's no, there's nothing to be decided and there's no person on the line except for those two. Exactly. Um, but I like that it's going to happen right away because like, you're right. I don't think there's going to be a lot of gameplay or, or strategy going on besides just the campaigning of the two people who are on the block because it didn't. The HO, no one had to choose who to put on the block. No one had to suggest anyone to put on the block. No one had to, you know, it's like they didn't have to create alliances or do anything yet. I mean, obviously they probably did create alliances, but it just seems like there's usually more to it when there's an HOH. So with no HOH, you just have two people on the block and it's basically comes down to like, okay, well, who are you going to vote out? And that's that. Yeah, um, and, and, and usually it's like the HOH chose those people right. usually for a reason, mm -hmm. um, but now it's, <clears throat> that's not the case, but the audience chose those people, and they don't know how much the audience has seen necessarily, and so they might think that the audience chose them for a reason, and that might have some impact, um, but yeah, I think just in general, like it's, it's a different start to, to a yeah. season than, than what we normally see, and so I'm very curious to see how it plays out. And honestly, I like it. I mean, obviously, like we always say, like the twists, okay, we prefer no twists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for a twist, it's not bad because I always feel like the first HOH just chooses two people to put on the block that are like either they've done something to stand out or which makes them maybe a fun character or they do they don't do anything to stand out, but they stand out for one reason or another for traits that they can't pick and choose like being older or being like bigger or something like that. You know what I mean? And so it's, I don't like that. Like it kind of sucks. Cause it's like, they just get chosen at random. And sometimes you lose a fun character and sometimes you lose someone who like maybe should have, who we wish could have had a chance, like usually the older person or whatever. Um, and so I kind of like that this one is a little different in that it gives people the chance to not be on the block right away. Like, I feel like if this happened in the last season of Big Brother, Cliff would have been saved, I'm sure, because everyone in the beginning was like, oh, this guy's so great. I love him, you know? And he would have had people voting for him, but maybe, and so he, he would have been safe. There wouldn't have been a problem. And not that he got out. I don't know where I'm going with this, but essentially I'm just saying that I like the idea that not only does it not just target people who are on the outs right away with no way to like do anything about it. Um, but it also gives them multiple chances to save themselves um, and not just a veto. Like you get different types of chances rather than just the physical competition. There's physical, there's mental, and then there's the social component of the vote. I just like that. It's like you're tested on all fronts and on all levels of big brother and you got to save yourself. And I like that. Yeah, I, I will say that in terms of twists, in terms of Big Brother Canada twists, this is probably one of the better ones. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it, that in ter like it, fairness, it's it's probably the most fair twist we've seen. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't count the the veto, the no veto twist as a like twist. Um, in terms of like the behavior that it uh, discourages, because that's something that twists you know, often don't. They don't. I don't think they think of the ramifications of twists, where like you know showing the diary room sessions discourages you from being honest mm -hmm. in the diary yeah. room, and uh, screwing somebody over for making a bold move discourages people from making bold bold moves. Uh, the only thing this really discourages is people i think uh you know being villainous in their preseason interviews like uh being i guess like more more interesting in a villainous way it seems like that's really where the uh the, the vote 
has gone to that, uh, you know, we saw Ming Lee, uh, Chris, Nico. Um, and then I guess Suzanne maybe was a little like uh, she came off a little annoying, I guess, in her mm -hmm. or at least they portrayed her to be annoying. In right. The, yeah. And, and like, really, if Suzanne is the one to go home. I don't know how fair that is considering what they gave her in that intro video. Um, yeah. But uh, but but still leagues more fair than I think most Big Brother Canada twists. So uh, I got I got a hand it there. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, look, I feel like the sucky thing is, is that I don't think it's the fact that they're villainous. That's the problem. I think that the reason why people didn't necessarily like them, in particular Nico, is that he didn't come across as like a fun villain. He came across as like, yeah, I'm a scary Jekyll and Hyde guy and I'm awful. I like, think Ming Lee came off came as fun up. though. I think, I think she came off as fun, but I also think I thought she came off as fun because I watched her Ica interview so first. So I was taking that attitude of like, oh, she's that sort of person into watching that video. But if you only saw that intro video, not that people only saw the intro video, but I'm saying like in terms of setting them up, Big Brother Canada did not do a great job of setting those people up because yeah. I feel like they were different in their Ica video, or at least Ming Lee was and Suzanne. Yeah. So I, the boys like, yeah, that's who they were in both videos. <laughs> There's nothing that could have been done. But the girls, I do feel like they weren't given a fair shake with their Big Brother Canada video. Yeah, well, so what What uh, Arissa does is she announces the four people, and it is uh, Chris, Nico, Ming Lee, and Suzanne. And uh, the, uh, Nico in particular seemed pretty devastated uh, mm -hmm. about the uh, the news. Um, Chris was obviously a bit taken aback. Um, he even he even said in his diary room, he was like, uh, "We gotta we gotta work on uh, getting back to good publicity." Um, yeah. Which, like, for a guy that uploaded YouTube videos about his like uh, you know pseudoscience coaching thing uh, day before he was uh, to go onto the show, um, <laughs> saying the word publicity is, uh, I think, a bit of a tell um, in terms yeah. of what he's there for. Yeah. Oh boy. I hope not. God, if he just talks about that the whole time, I'm gonna be very sad. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so they are told there is a strength competition, a mental competition, and then there's a vote. And so uh, the strength competition we're going to get into right away. It's they are holding cars up on uh, some sort of ledge. Do you think with those were real rope. cars? No. Okay. I was like, I'm, I could not tell. I was like, there is no way. But then when they fell, it kind of was like, oh, this like made a big impact. I think. It might be. It, the, the, honestly, the impact was probably more editing than anything. Um, it, it was cool, though. The, yeah. I thought it was a really cool setup. Yeah. It reminded me of Jurassic Park when the car is going over the cliff. But uh, I honestly, I, I thought it was really cool. And um, the girls dominated. Very true. Yes. So that was I, insane. I, I missed it. I, 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 I was trying to listen for it, but I, I missed it when Arissa said that the, the cars were weighted yeah. according to your body weight and in a proportional manner. I'd be very curious to find out what formula they used uh, to be proportional here. Um, yeah. Chris, Chris is like, I'm in the gym five, six days a week like this. If there's a strength competition, this is my thing. He's the first one gone by a mile. Um, yeah. And so it's like. It seems to me like perhaps the more muscle you have, the more you weigh, and therefore the less uh, That's success gotta you're going to find. That's got to be what it is. Yeah. That's really got to be. Because honestly, like they tried to explain it away with Kyle being like, oh, it's about body stance. But I was like, is it that much about body stance? Like, I feel like the girls were just like, yeah, I'm holding a car on my back. It's cool. And <laughs> right. the guys were like, oh, my God, I'm holding this car. You know, it's <laughs> like, are you what's going on here? So I don't know what the deal was, but. Ming Lee did such a good job. Yes, that not to take amazing. away from the fact that uh, that Ming Lee and Suzanne did uh, did a great job here. Ming Lee takes it home, and she yeah. is going to be the first one who is safe. That was a shocking development. I literally thought, well, you know what? One of the guys is going to get the strength one, but at least the girls have a shot with the uh, the the brains one. You know, the quiz one, whatever it's going to be, um, and. I I was really happy with the result, to be honest. 
I was really happy. I wonder if the mental competition is also going to be weighted according to body weight. Uh, that uh, the heavier you are, the the more the muscular, you, the more muscular muscular you are, uh, the easier the, the the quiz or whatever. <laughs> That, yeah, that actually wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I honestly, I, I was very shocked and pleasantly surprised with the results of this one. I feel like out of all the people that were in the bottom four, I was most hoping that Ming Lee would stay just because mm. I really like her character. Um, and I also, I think she'll be fun and strategic. And I just, I want to see where this goes. And the other ones, I don't, I'm not as invested. And I know you tweeted about how, like, I don't really know enough about them to like really have a good understanding of like who to root for in this thing. Um, but I will say that I was rooting for Ming Lee. So to have her win the first one and be safe and not have to worry about that anymore, that was really nice. I, I did feel like they uh, they put as much energy as they could. So, I mean, uh, we've had this complaint before, if you can call it a complaint, maybe a critique before, that they often have these sort of like high stakes competitions or votes or first night mm -hmm. evictions where uh, it's like, oh, which one is going to leave? But it's the first night. And so you don't really know who these right, people so we are. Don't care. And so you don't really care much. Um, the, I think that what they did to try and remedy this as much as possible is that uh, Ming Lee got a, a, a probably the most amount of screen time as anybody mm -hmm. on, on the episode uh with the drinking stuff and then uh then you know talking to vanessa after hearing about the thing and she had a conversation with jamar so she got a lot of content to be like uh like get invested in this person because she's the mm -hmm. one that wins and then you'll feel good about the competition right um and uh you know, i think lucky for them it was ming lee who's i think an, an easy person to give content to um yeah. so uh so i i do think it, it mostly works out here um and then i assume that tomorrow night we're going to see the mental competition and the eventual vote out uh and we'll have our first person evicted from big brother canada eight and then uh we'll, we're gonna go from there yeah we'll kick the season off uh we also saw um it's uh, um wow i can't remember john luke um who i do you know what he was wearing i was gonna say what was everyone wearing true Everybody looked crazy. <laughs> it's very like, true. Like normally they all look like elegant and like they come in and you're just like, wow, these stylish people. Like what what was was it like what was wardrobe thinking if wardrobe was in charge of any of this? Because this was a lot. Yeah, I, like I always patterns, colors, shapes, different like sizes. It was like I don't even know what was going on. I always think back to Big Brother Canada Six when Erica came on stage in the premiere episode, and she was like in she dressed like elegantly. Yeah. Um, and then in the house, she's just like always dressed down, and like she looks amazing regardless. But like, there's a very different style, uh, and I think it's it's it seems at least very clear that the, that they really. They try to dress them up, right, uh, yeah. for the premiere. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what the uh, the goal was here. Um, I don't know if, if John Luke had any say in this suit or if they put him in this suit. I don't know what it is. It was like, it was like a sky blue with clouds or something. Uh, it was it, very strange. Everybody looked very very odd to me like what was jamar wearing like i don't even remember was he was like, wearing like a gold sparkly gold uh but wasn't he wearing like suit. something like floofy hair like i don't know i just Maybe. feel like that's what i was imagining but <laughs> it, like everyone was wearing i don't know remind me of like the beast or something in beauty and the beast when he's like got the little like <laughs> yeah. you know like he's wearing that sparkly suit and he's got the little like thing i don't they know they should have put kyle in that i, I don't think that know that would have been more appropriate um, that would have been appropriate <laughs> that could have you know give kyle the behind, floof. But, yeah give him floof i don't know it was just like everyone was wearing stuff that was not either not flattering or like just really crazy and i, I guess it's something to like draw your eyes to it but at the same time it's like yeah and like um what nico had like a pink pink jacket on like a pink suit coat on There's if i'm being honest i remember glasses. i remember jamar's gold thing and i remember john luke's uh, sky blue and that's basically it i was i was just surprised by some of the wardrobe cho choices yeah uh, i mean i guess it kind of fits in with the house theme right just like very over the top uh sort of you know colorful uh you know designy stuff uh yeah i guess uh, Mel melissa true. also wants plain clothes 
Yeah, plain. You know what? Plain clothes, plain house. Yeah. That's, what, just, that's what big brother's all about white t-shirt jeans uh <laughs> white everyone, wallpaper everyone in just like white jumpsuits <laughs> in <laughs> in a plain white house i think you're no describing color. a prison camp melissa <laughs> <laughs> no color no light like no you know no fun times no music no singing no laughing like honestly we just want pure <laughs> unadulterated game yeah <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> it's so scary I all right that. i so that that's basically what we got from the premiere we will of course be back uh if you're listening to this thursday morning we'll be live tonight after the episode to recap uh what will i assume be the first eviction episode of the season and then tomorrow morning friday morning 11 a.m eastern i will be live with puya to recap our first night of live feeds and uh you're really not going to want to miss that one because uh it's going to be where all the juicy info information comes out uh because we learn so much when those live feeds turn on um so make sure you tune in for that uh anything else that you wanted to talk about melissa nope not really i'm really excited to see where the season goes i feel like the when the live feeds turn on that's when you get all the information i just remember when the live feeds came on um what was big brother 19 i think and jessica and cody were like in bed together snuggling i was like Oh my God, no. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Jessica, we are, we are rooting for you. What's going on? So, yeah. What a wild ride that season was. What a wild ride. And I'm so glad we're off of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, tune into all of that great stuff. You can also, if you checked out uh, this week's Survivor episode, I will be live with Andy Heron uh, at f- uh, 6 p.m. Eastern on Thursday uh, to talk Survivor. Uh, you can also, of course, listen to that or watch that after the fact as well. We're going to do the Legacy Watch and see uh, how the episode impacted the winner's legacies and, of course, go into detail about what happened in the episode. And uh, I think that's what we have for you so uh make sure you find me on twitter at armstrong taren you can find melissa at it's melissa with three a's that's how long three a's sound like pronounced Mm -hmm. correctly get it right guys it's true it's important (laughs) yeah all right uh thank you guys so much for joining us we hope you have a good season and we'll see you soon